Hi, this is Ahmed Alugaili and Manos Berlakis, presenting case 229 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case in which uh, two myocardial territories were revascularized after decanalizing a single chronic total occlusion. The patient was an elderly gentleman who presented with exertional dyspnea. He had a recent bypass with uh, Lima to LAD that was patent and vein graft to the ramus that was also patent. However, he had a vein graft to the right, PDA, that was occluded. The SPECT showed inferior and inferior lateral ischemia, and he was found to have a right coronary artery CTO and referred for PCI of the RCA CTO. And this is the coronary angiogram. There is some um, disease in the LAD with competitive flow from the lima. There is also filling of this vessel on the lateral wall. And the question is, what exactly is this vessel here? Because this, this vessel could be a large right posterior lateral going on the lateral wall. But this course of an artery seems to be very unusual. And upon further inspection, it turns out that this is the PDA. And this is actually a connecting segment of the graft. The patient had a sequential SVG to the PDA and to a posterior lateral. And the flow between the PDA and the posterior lateral is actually coming through this connecting segment of the vein graft. And this is the right coronary artery that is occluded in the proximal segment. There is some microchannel going to the mid, but then there is significant calcification in this area. And this is the dual injection, showing once again this um, vessel that has a clip next to it that further uh, demonstrates that this is actually a segment of a bypass graft. And uh, this posterior lateral or obtuse marginal is filling, and then it's filling through this uh, bypass graft the right posterior descending artery. And this is the right coronary artery. Again, there is flow to the mid RCA, but then the patient appears to have a long occlusion from the mid RCA all the way to the distal right. So it seems to be like a blunt occlusion. The length uh, seems to be on the long side. The distal vessel is diffusely diseased, and there are some septal collaterals from the LAD. So our plan was to try with undergrade wiring first, then go retrograde through septals, and if that failed, use ADR, which was the least preferred approach because of significant disease in the distal RCA. So here it is. Um, we uh, tried to wire with a turnpike spiral and a filter XTA, soft uh, tapered polymer jacketed guide wire. And we like to call this the one minute wire. You try quickly and see if you achieve any progress. If not, then this wire is quickly replaced by another more penetrating guide wire, either a polymer jacket like the Gladius Mongo or the Pilot 200, or a more penetrating such as the Gaia and the Gaia Next. To our surprise, actually, this wire quickly um, went uh, distally and doing the contralateral injection, we now see that we have crossed into the PDA. So unexpected crossing of a fairly long CTO using this polymer jacketed soft wire. However, the problem started afterwards because we were unable to advance the turnpike spiral despite an amplitude guide through the mid RCA. So what to do? This is a microcatheter uncrossable, which is approached in a similar way as the balloon uncrossable lesion. We first try a small balloon grenadoplasty, get more support with guide extensions. We can use different microcatheters or the wire cutting technique. We can use laser, we can use atherectomy or subintimal techniques. I would say that laser in this particular case might not be the best approach because laser over a polymer jacketed guide wire might result in melting of the wire coating and entrapment of the um, laser catheter over the wire. So we use the guide extension. This was a trap liner. And then we used a small balloon followed by a larger balloon. And we were then able to advance the turnpike spiral all the way to the PDA. Injecting, we can see that we have indeed this connected bypass graft segment that goes from the PDA into the posterior lateral or an, an obtuse marginal branch. And to facilitate equipment delivery, we used a wiggle wire. We then did intravascular ultrasound, and uh, we did see that... Uh, we did have intraplaque crossing all along the way. There is some calcification, although it's not circumferential. 
but uh, the crossing was uh, intra-black throughout the RCA. So we predilated and we had good balloon expansion. We did place to drag looting stents and uh, we have now good flow from the RCA going to the PDA and to, into this other branch that seems to be on the left side. Are we done? And when we look a little more carefully at the proximal RCA, it does look a little funny. So we did the intravascular ultrasound again, and there was a dissection, a large dissection in this proximal segment. So this was likely a guide-induced dissection of the proximal right coronary artery that was treated with another drug eluting stent. And this is the final result. We do have good flow in the right coronary artery. And then through this connecting uh, segment of the graft, we see that we're feeling an obtuse marginal, and then we're going backwards towards the proximal circumflex. So this is uh, where the title of the case came from. We have two for one, opened one CTO, the RCA CTO, and we revascularized two territories, both the inferior wall, but also the lateral wall through this uh, formerly placed bypass graft segment. So several lessons from this case. The first one is looking at the angiogram is critical for success. In this case, understanding the role of this connecting bypass graft segment between the PDA and an obtuse marginal was very important. Also, sometimes we may overestimate the difficulty of the lesion. Initially, this lesion appeared to be highly complex with calcium and long length. However, using a filter XTA, we found that the lesion actually was shorter and was easily crossed with uh, the filter XTA guide wire. One of the downsides of intra-plaque crossing with the wire is that we may have difficulty delivering a microcatheter. This can be microcatheter and balloon and crossable lesions, and it is important to have an algorithm for approaching these lesions. In our case, we did use a small balloon at Subfire, and we also increased the support with the guide extension, and this led to successful crossing of the mid -right coronary artery. And uh, last but not least, Using Amplet's left guides for the right coronary artery is important for complex PCI because it does provide very strong support, much better than JR4, but it doesn't come without some risk, and the risk is for causing dissections of the proximal RCA. This did happen in our case, but we detected it and we treated it using another drug eluting stand. Thank you.